All right, so let's spend a little bit of time on this slide. Uh, if you take a look, this is a cartoon diagram of a cell, and we're not looking at any of the organelles. Our, all we are looking at are the chromosomes, and they're color-coded. So the paternal chromosomes are the ones that come from the dad are in blue. The maternal chromosomes, the ones that come from the mom, are in red. So you'll notice that this cell has two sets, right? a set of three chromosomes that are blue from the dad, a set of three chromosomes that are red from the mom. This indicates that this is a diploid cell, 2N. It has two sets of chromosomes. Now, each set of chromosomes has three chromosomes in it, right? So here, N is represented by the number three, one, two, three in the set from the mom, one, two, three from the set from the dad. Now, each chromosome from the dad has a matching pair on the set from the mom. So these two are the two long chromosomes. They are homologs. This medium-sized blue chromosome has a matching pair in the maternal set, right? Those are homologs. And then the two short ones, one in the set from the dad, one in the set from the mom. These two are also going to be homologs. Now, because the cell is anticipating going through cell division, the chromosomes are already condensed because you can actually see them in their condensed form. This means that the cell has moved past the S phase where DNA gets replicated. And so all of these chromosomes are existing as duplicated chromosomes. So you can see the two sister chromatids here stuck together for this one duplicated chromosome. So remember, the two copies on the same chromosome are called sister chromatids. Now let me add one more important point here. If you compare one chromatid so there's one copy from one homolog to one chromatid from the other homolog. These two chromatids are called non-sister chromatids, indicating that there are, they are on the same pair of homologs. However, they are not identical, right? They'll carry the same genes uh, for the same inherited characters, but they might not be the same version of that gene, brown eyes versus blue eyes, for example. So these two, are non-sister chromatids. You can do the same thing comparing this guy and this guy. Those are both non-sister chromatids. So you can compare this one to this one and this one to that one. All non-sister chromatids when you're comparing copies of the chromosome between homologous chromosomes. All right, so what we looked at on the previous slide in that cartoon can actually be done with real live cells, meaning you can break open a cell and you can look at the condensed chromosomes under a microscope to see, do you have all the right matching pairs? Are the chromosomes all the right length? Or are you missing pieces of chromosomes or whole chromosomes, or maybe you have extra chromosomes? This technique is called a karyotype. So karyotype is defined as an ordered display of the pairs of homologous chromosomes from a cell. In order to be able to do a karyotype, you have to take a cell that's in the process of mitosis. So at this point, if it's in mitosis actively dividing, DNA synthesis has already occurred, right? So each chromosome that you're looking at is replicated or is a duplicated chromosome consisting of two identical sister chromatids. And on top of that, the chromosomes are condensed. That's key, because if they're not condensed, you're not going to be able to see the different chromosomes under the microscope. It's just going to be kind of a hazy mess inside the nucleus. So the cell needs to be in mitosis. The chromosomes are going to be duplicated, and they have to be condensed for you to be able to visualize them. And so what a person will do if they're doing a karyotype is they'll take this cell in mitosis, and they'll break open uh, the cell will spill out all the chromosomes and then they'll probably stain them with some fluorescent dye or marker so that you can actually see the chromosomes under the microscope. And so on this slide we've got an individual here who's sitting at the microscope and she's looking into the eyepieces. But there's also a camera on the top of the microscope here and the camera is projecting to the computer screen. So what she sees we also see in the computer screen. And so she's looking at a whole slew of chromosomes here. Each one of the orange little worms is an individual duplicated chromosome. And her job is to take a picture of all these chromosomes and then using Photoshop or some other um, image manipulation software, she would cut out 
right, crop little uh, individual pictures of each of the chromosomes, and then line up all the chromosome pairs, as you see here, from 1 to 23 in the human genome. Ones are going to be the longest chromosomes, all the way down to 22, right, that 22nd pair of chromosomes are the shortest, and then the 23rd pair, these are your sex chromosomes. So in this case, this individual whose karyotype is being shown here has an X and a Y chromosome, this happens to be a male. And each one of these homologs that you're looking at, we look at a cartoon blow up, is actually a pair of sister chromatids. So you're looking at four copies of the same DNA for each homologous pair. And this particular staining is kind of cool. It looks like a little rainbow, um, but using different fluorescent markers, you can stain and you can see sort of the striations or the stripes on these chromosomes, helping you again match up the homologs to make sure that everything looks good. So for this individual, they have two of every pair of homologs. Everything looks great there. None of the chromosomes are shorter than they should be or longer than they should be. And so this would be a normal karyotype. When we get to chapters 14 and 15, we talk about genetics, we'll take a look at a karyotype where things aren't normal, and where you can actually use the karyotype to diagnose genetic disorders, like Down syndrome, for example. Okay, um, so now that we've built up a little bit of background on um, what we anticipate to talk about in this chapter in terms of meiosis. We know that meiosis um, is a type of cell division where you are going to create daughter cells that are going to make your gametes, so either sex, or so either your sperm or your egg cell. This is a great point now to talk a little bit about how those cells would be used in sexual reproduction and what is the other option besides sexual reproduction. So here we get to, um, uh, contrast sexual reproduction with asexual reproduction. So in sexual reproduction, this is where two parents give rise to an offspring. And the offspring is going to have a unique combination of genes inherited from two parents. So your mom's going to give you 50% of her genes, and dad's going to give you 50% of his genes, and you're going to be a mix of uh, genetic information from both parents. And so for sexual reproduction, you need those two parents. For asexual reproduction, this is where a single individual will pass on all of its genes to the next generation or to the offspring. There's no fusion of gametes. It's just one individual organism giving all of its genetic um, makeup to the next uh, generation. So what this does is it creates a group of genetically identical individuals from the same parent. These are called clones. So when a unicellular organism goes through division, that one cell copies all of its genetic information, passes it on to the next generation, and creates a whole bunch of clones of itself during sexual or sorry, during asexual reproduction. We don't do that, right? We participate in sexual reproduction instead. So we need two parents to pass on some of their genes to make the next generation. So let's take a look at the sexual life cycle of an animal, AKA the human in this case. And the way that we define a life cycle, this is the generation to generation sequence of stages in the reproductive history of an organism. So let's start here with an adult male and female human. In the female, you have the ovaries. These are going to give rise um, to the egg cells. And then testes, you're going to have cells here that are going to give rise to the sperm cells. In this case, in both of these organs, meiosis is the process that will produce the egg or the sperm. And in meiosis, you are essentially going to split sets of chromosomes between the cells. So each egg and sperm cell, instead of having two sets, so 46 chromosomes, they only have one set. So N equals 23, only 23 chromosomes in either the egg or the sperm. And then during the process of fertilization, you have the egg come together with the sperm. They each bring their 23 chromosomes to form now a fertilized egg, which we called which we call the zygote, and this is going to now be our first diploid cell of the next organism, having two sets of chromosomes for a total of 46 in the human, and this is then going to start dividing via mitosis to develop eventually into the adult male or female human. 
Now, just to review a little bit, we did introduce some new terms. So fertilization, this is gonna be the union of gametes, sperm and egg. This happens on the right-hand side of the cycle here. This is where you have sets of chromosomes coming together to create the new diploid cell, which is the next generation. This is the zygote, another name for the fertilized egg. Remember the zygote being diploid, it has two sets of chromosomes, one set from each parent. And then um, once the parent develops, then some of their cells will repeat the process. Again, going through meiosis here in the ovary or testes to separate the sets of chromosomes to create egg and sperm so that you can continue the cycle over and over again. All right, and so when we look at a sexual life cycle, this is really an um, alternation in the events of fertilization and meiosis, right? So meiosis will split sets of chromosomes to create haploid cells, and fertilization allows the coming together of sets of chromosomes uh, to create diploid organisms. And so you have an alternation, meiosis you split, Fertilization come back together. Meiosis split sets of chromosomes. Fertilization allows sets of chromosomes to come together. And the unique thing then about sexual reproduction is that the sets of chromosomes that come together during fertilization don't come from the same parent, right? They come from two different individuals, allowing for the genes to be mixed a little bit, right? Creating variation in the offspring.